Amen. Hallelujah. Messiah, greetings to you all. Blessed things. Messiah, greetings to you, whatever part of the world that you are streaming, watching, and you are live with us. We greet you. We bring you love in the mighty name of our glorious master, Jesus Christ. Welcome to our Sunday's online life service ministration. It is the fruit of divine. And we bless God and we thank God for making it possible for us to be here today. Uh, thank you for one content fellowshipping in his presence where we are liberated, where we receive fulfillment, where we receive liberty from all worries of life. As he said, cast all your cares, all your burdens onto me and I will give you rest. So we are in the rest of the Father. And as we are in his rest, we are to enjoy the benefit of being in his rest where we come into his presence and we share with others the fullness that we have received from the Father. Indeed, God is beautiful. Indeed, God is good. Indeed, God is lovely. Indeed, God remains God. And God is love. Blessed viewers, we greet you. We welcome you once again. I'd like to greet all my brothers, men and women of God all over the world. I'd like to continue to wish all the Rabbonites and every sons and daughters of my father, Prophet Sekodane, one continuous happy spiritual birthday. And uh, we still continue to celebrate. We, we will continue to celebrate the all of the month of September. It is a beautiful month that God has given to us. And we thank God on the beautiful messages that God keeps revealing to us. Our blessed saying, remember, uh, we are blessed intercessors. We are raised for, the, uh, uh, for a unique purpose, uh, raised to uh, pray for others. Uh, raised to uh, save others. For those that are saved, you are also to save others. Remember, you are not saved to remain. You are saved to save others. So uh, the spirit of, of, of the Lord that is upon you, as Jesus said, such spirit is upon us all. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 said, the spirit of the, of the Lord, the spirit of the Father is upon me. And the spirit has anointed him to set the captive spirit. So this is the same spirit that, the, that our master Jesus promised us in John 14, in John 16, John 17. It's the same spirit that he promised. That this same spirit will comfort us. And it will also lead us to set the captive free. There are many who are under, under the subdue of the wickedness of the world. There are many who are under the subdue of the evil doers. There are many who, evil witchcraft manipulation, have subdued their mind, have subdued their livelihood. It has subdued their body. Their body begins to respond to witchcraft manipulation. Evil that has been done in dark places, their body responds to it because their soul has been tied to such things. It is our duty. It is our responsibility to raise up, as we have been raised, to sit at the right hand of the father. So it is our, our, our duty to assume our position and pray as a spirit man. Praying as a spirit man is declaring the word that is from your innermost being, the word that has come to stay, the word that has come to give life, the word that has come to restore, the word that has come to revive, the word that has come to set the captive spirit. So the word is in you. The word is in you. You search no more. Romans 10. He said the word of the Lord is not somewhere where someone has to clamp to go and attain or to go and, to go and receive. The word of God is in your mouth, is on your lips, is in your heart, is in your mind. Speak it. So we are going to be speaking right now, blessed sinners. We are going to be praying. We are going to be interceding for nations. We always continue, continually intercede for those that are sick on their body. There are many who are going through all kind of sickness in their body. There are many who are going through all kind of challenges. We are going to still continue to pray for them. Praying with the word, the word that is spirit, the word that is alive, the word that is active. Remember, God watches to see that his word is being performed. So now who speak the word of the Lord that is being performed? The one that have received it. And how, do, how did we receive it? By faith we receive it. We believe when we heard this word. We believe when we heard this teaching. We claim this teaching. We hold on to this teaching. We hold on to this word because we believe when we receive it. So we also, we should not by any chance or by any means deny ourselves 
from what you've received, from what you've known. You are blessed, Vincent. Right now, we are going to pray. We are going to intercede. Remember, remember, uh, uh, there are many orphanage centers that need the presence of the Lord, so that those who are under uh, those who are under the influence, those who are under the influence of of human trafficking, human abduction that is that, we, that has been ongoing, which we 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 all know. We've, we've seen we've seen how this has been playing out. We pray against such from happening in our society. We pray against the will of God to happen upon every orphanage centers. Remember also, we're not going to forget the learners, the youths. We pray for them. We declare the word of the Lord over their life. As many are preparing to go into, into examination hall, we pray that the will of God happen for them. And not forgetting the leaders, the president, pray for each president of each nation. you the president of your nation, the president of all nations, pray for them. Remember, they are the faces of nations. And every decision they make affects the nations. We pray for them, for their decision to be influenced by the spirit of the Lord. A fear, a fear leader, a leader that fears God, a leader that honors God, a leader that has the fear of God in, in heart, in mind, such leaders will act on the basis of the word of God. Such leaders will act as a fruit of the spirit. Remember, the fruit of the spirit, as we all know, Galatians chapter 5, the love, patience, perseverance, endurance. So leaders that, are, that have the fear of the Lord operate in this measure. These are the characteristics that we find in such leaders because the, the, such leaders are operating by the spirit of the Lord. So we pray for them. We pray for them. So open your mouth right now, Mr. Singh, and let's, let's pray uh, to, to our Father. And on behalf of all the masses from all over the world, Father, we thank you, King of Glory, we worship you. Abba, Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor. Le kature libra de shizure libra andista kure. Le ke debra du shizure libra de kalushe ke ente. E libra katusta kure. E libra de shizure libra libra de shikure lira andista kure. Je bra katasura, je bra katalire. Je de ta kusha, je debra ata, je de sa kusha libra usha ke ente. E libra da tata sakura, e libra katata salira. E le ke debra du shizure libra ke shizure libra andista kure. We bless you. Holy name, my Father. Thank you for your presence, O Lord God Almighty. We continue to pray and stand on the gap of families that are under witchcraft and the pollution, O oh Lord. Let your presence that preach us to labor into the light of God comes upon that family, O oh Lord. Darkness sees from operating the life of those families. Every evil witchcraft and the pollution that has been perpetrated, done against the better will of this family, Lord God Almighty. We declare your presence to take over. We declare the light of God to take over. As we continue to pray for nations, we continue to pray for prison. We we come to pray for learners. We come to pray for students. We come to declare praise upon every orphanage center. We wage war against 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 addition that has robbed many of their livelihood. Addition that continues to bring so much of matter in many families, in many households, in many homes. We declare we declare and wage war against such addition. That strong of addition be broken over their life. That strong of addition be broken over their body. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, King of Glory, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to our master. Glory to our savior. Indeed, we give him all, we give him all the glory. All the honor belongs to him. All glory belongs to him. Bless his sin. And uh, we thank God. We bless God. We give him all the glory. Um, um, just before we uh, go uh, go on quickly, um, um, we are of time out of space. We continue to we continue to move. According to his will, according to his faithfulness, uh, uh, please bear in mind that um, we um, it is a fruit of divine service that will be we we'll partaking from uh, to, uh, this morning, and we we are meant to be here uh, an hour ago. Uh, we've been battling with <laughs> technology for over almost almost over over, over seventy something minutes. But, but thank goodness we are finally live, and um, uh, this is the time that God has made for us to be here, and we are going to rejoice, and we are glad, and we are going to uh, make the best of time, because what God gives is the best. God does not give what is not uh, good. Uh, God God gives what is best, so this is the best time for us to be here. So uh, um, allow me quickly to uh, take us through this uh, Bible's reading, if I may. Um, amen. 
So I love you, Master. So I love you, Jesus. So it's Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Okay. Let me start from. Let me start from verse uh, thirteen. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse thirteen. Say so yet, we have the same spirit of faith as he had, who wrote, "I have believed." And therefore I have spoken. We too believe, and therefore we speak. He said, We too will believe, and therefore we speak. Remember, we just said that uh, we are going to be partaking from the fruit of the vine. So now, what is this fruit of the vine? We are to walk by this fruit, we are to live by this fruit. Our characteristics, our character must be examined daily and be seen by possessing, by by possessing the characteristics of the spirit of God, which is which is why in Galatians 4, it says, Galatians 4 verse 6 says, walk by the spirit, walk by the spirit. So how does one walk by spirit? You walk in love, you walk in patience, you walk in perseverance, you walk with endurance. So now, 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 now listen, Apostle Paul now came and began to teach that how does one begin to, to walk in this way? Does one just uh, uh, wear this patience, listen, a word which is a word from God, which is the word of God that we have received, is a word that has been spoken and is a word that one should exercise in our heart. Now, how does, how does one exercise this word? And you see, by meditation of the word, by meditation of the word. Now, does it mean that what we, what we, are, what we face daily, those challenges that we go through. Every day we face challenges. Every day we go through it. We go through it all. But uh, uh, because you are in the world, because your conscience, your mind, your mind, your heart, your meditation is not what you are going through. It is not. It is not your trouble that you are calculating. That's why those trouble cannot dictate how you walk in faith. Those trouble cannot tell you when to pray and when, when, when not to pray. Those trouble will not dictate your fellowshipping. Those trouble will not, will, will, not, will not tell you your relationship status in Christ. So troubles, they are not meant to, to cause us to fail or cause us to fall or cause us to death. They're actually meant for, for our faith to be improved, meaning for, for the capacity of our faith to grow. This was how Apostle, Apostle Paul grew more in the world. So much trouble came, so much knowledge he grew in the world. So much trouble over, that, that can easily overwhelm him. But instead of those trouble to take hold of his mind, he grew in the knowledge of faith. That's why he said in Philippians, say, I'm still advancing at Philippians 3. Philippians 3 say, I'm still advancing. Look, he remained, a, what he possessed, it's, of, it's, it's a possession that has no limitation. So it remained a trophy in the hands of the one who gave, who gave him the word. So now God has given you what will cause you to prosper. God has given you what will cause you to, to succeed in life. God has given you what will make you to become a champion in life. Because what God gives cannot fail. So because God is not a man that he should lie, nor that, that he should fail. So what God has caused you to bear on you, what God has caused, caused for you to have in your, in your heart, in your mind, is something that, has, that, has, that, that, that is everlasting and is of something that is of, of priceless possession. Its value, there is, no, there is no amount of currency because it is of spiritual currency. So it's a currency that does not operate with human standard value. It's a spiritual currency, but it's in you. It's in you. So how, how can one see it? Your character, your behavior. That's why we spoke about fruits of the spirit. He said, walk habitually. Habitually, walk habitually, walk by the spirit. So what, what, are, the, what are the fruit of the spirit? What are the fruit of the spirit? So before we continue here, let me let's quickly let's quickly go to uh, Galatians Galatians four before we con Galatians five story, pardon me, Galatians chapter five. See, but but see, verse twenty two. Say, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which is presence within. Listen, say the work which is is presence. The work that is presence within, the work which is presence within accomplishes. Is it 
accomplishes is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and even, even temper, forbearance, forbearance, kindness, uh, go, uh, goodness, uh, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-control, uh, ability to control yourself, ability to control yourself. You see, when the Spirit of God comes upon you right now, the Spirit of God influences your speech. The Spirit of God influences your mind. The Spirit of God influences your behavior. Now, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, it takes over your tongue, your tongue, so that you don't make speeches that are not of holy, so that you don't make speeches that are not worthy, because God watches to see that it perform his throne, so that what you speak, however you say it, whatever you speak, so that it, it should not come back and be a, be a judgment to you. Remember Matthew 12, it says everyone will be judged with the word that comes out of your mouth. So if your word is not seasoned with salt, if your word, if your speech it's not control. If if it's not self control, if, if if it does not bear forbearance, if it does if it does not come with goodness, if it does not come with meekness. So how does it come with goodness? How does it come with meekness? How does it come with gentleness? He said, "Bless those who curse you." He said, "Bless those who curse you." He said, "Love those who hate you." Love those who hate you because Second Corinthians chapter ten from verse three to five we say our our battle is not of Kana, it's not of flesh, it's not of blood, but of rulers, of principality. So you 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 don't respond to the way somebody speak to you. You don't respond by the way people look at you. You don't respond by the way people misjudge you. You don't respond by the way people curse you. You don't respond by the way people attack you. So people will always attack you. People will always judge you. People will always call you names. People will always belittle to you. But you don't respond in the same manner, in the same vein that they call you, in the same vein that they attacked you in the same vein that they call your name. So that self-control comes in at that point in time. Now, when self-control comes upon you now, your tongue has been influenced. Your, your mind as all as is, is, in, is in kindness. Your mind is in gentleness. Your mind is in goodness. So your mind is not thinking of something that is not pure. So where is the, why is your mind not thinking of something that is not pure? Because your mind already has been set on things on above. Colossians chapter 3. It is set your mind on things on above. So in, in, in the above, there are no impurity. See, 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 no such thing as, as dirty. No such thing as impurity. No such thing that, you, that will cause you to sin. No such thing that will cause you to fail. No such thing that will cause you to fall. Because where, why you set your mind on things from above, whatever that is happening from the below, it has, it, 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 it has no, no, no bearing against you. It has, it, it, has, it has no foundation against you. No, it, it can never harm you. It can never touch you. It can never harm you. It can never touch you. See, Psalm 91. He said, a, a, a thousand of my feet at your side, 10,000 at your right hand said, Will they touch you? Will they harm you? Will they, they cannot touch you. They cannot harm you. For touch not of mine. Touch not of mine. This is a command of the Father because it's the same world. Remember, the world of the Father is the world that creates. The world of the Father is the, is the world that creates. So, Evil is a creation that the Father created. Now, the Father has given us authority over the works of his son. So everything, 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 good, bad, everything, everything, we have authority over it. We have authority over it. But mind how you react to how opposition comes at you. Mind how you react at how enemy comes at you. Mind how you react at how Friends, family gathered against you. Colleagues may come against you in an only manner, but mind how you react. Do not react like those who are opposing opposing you. Do not do not react like those who challenges and who comes against you with bitterness, with argument. Remember. Remember, we bring all this argument, we bring all this bitterness into the obedience of the word. So where does this word reside? The word reside in you. That's why I say from your innermost being, from your innermost being, this mouth shall speak of the goodness. This mouth shall speak of the kindness. Because now, whoever challenge you, whoever fights you, does not fight you, is not fighting you. The Father says, I will curse those who curse you. I will bless those who bless you. So you are standing on the mandate of the Father. So you act on the behalf of the Father, because why the Father is spirit. So if if if, if the Father is spirit, who the Father is spirit. So we are, if you are to walk like the Father, if you are to act like the Father, if you are to behave like 
like the Father. You also have to be like what? Spirit man. So who is a spirit man? A spirit man is the son of the Father because the Father is spirit. And the spirit man prayed as the Father intended for the, for, the, for, for the spirit man to pray. So how does the spirit man pray? The spirit man prayed the word of the Father. The word of the Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, 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 so let thy will be done as it is in heaven. So when we say, but how come I'm praying for people who does not, who does not, uh, 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 who does not tolerate, who does not like, who does not give, who does not even have time to, 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 to share the word? No, no, listen. Jesus, Acts chapter 5, says there, from day to day, time to time, city to city, he was going, he was going, he was going. Where, where his presence was not welcome, that's, that city became a cause. That village became a cause. But where, where his presence was received, that city became a blessing. That village became a blessing. In 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 in, in Mark in Mark uh, uh, Max nine we saw we saw what is it? Uh, um, Max is, says that um, a prophet is not honored in his own time. We saw how we saw how uh, um, uh, uh, it was only few it, it only 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 few uh, miracle ha- took place there it took place there because they did not accept him. They did not welcome him. They did not accept him. Now, what was their judgment? They began to say, but we knew him. We know him. Was it he? Was it he? Was it he? Was it he? So you might be viewed in that manner. Why don't you act like the father? He did not, he did not try to defend himself. He did not try to, to introduce himself. He did not even try to ID himself. He simply does the dust from his feet, and he, he walk from, 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 from their presence. And this was the instruction also he gave to us, his disciples, his followers. He said, whatever you find yourself to bring my gospel, and if that town, if that city, if that household did not welcome you, he said, does the feet, does the feet, does the dust 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 it from your feet? So dust the ashes from your feet. Say dust it and don't take it alone. Just dust it right there. Then you walk you walk away. So this this, this these are these are things that the Father has taught us. These are things that Jesus has given to us. So because often often many times you many Christians enters argument. You want to identify yourself. You want to you want to be the one to speak of yourself. No. Remember, Romans 8, the Holy Spirit will testify. The Holy Spirit will testify on our behalf. It is not for you to write who you are for anyone to believe the Christ in you. It is not for you to speak that you are a, a man or a woman of God. The Holy Spirit will testify. The Holy Spirit will testify. So the work that you do, the way you behave, your character, your character should speak for you. Get to the level whereby the characteristics of Christ that people have read and people admire and people want to be, let it be seen within you so that many will be drawn. I want to be like that fellow. I want to be like that woman. I want to be like that man. Because the way he speaks, the way she speaks, the way she works, the way she attends to me, with calmness, with patience, with perseverance, with endurance, with love. With goodness, the way he gives me time, the way he gives his time to me. So these these are, are, are factors that we draw on believers to say, listen, I, I may not I may not be born again. I, 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 I've seen some. I've seen this person. I've seen this man. I've seen this woman. But I see something different from these people. They don't claim to be, but they are doing their behavior. So be do of the word. They are doing. They are doing is talking to me. The way they do things speak to my mind. The way they speak, the way they do things speak to my conscience. Get listen, you get to a level, a level of Christianity that your main behavior, behavior your act, your character will be will, will just make people draw people, people you have not even spoken to. You will not even know that you've been of people have been observing you from a distance. You don't know that your character can even save life. That's why it is important for one 
to be influenced by the Holy Spirit and wrong, not to wrong influence. Because a wrong influence, we, sh- we, we, bring, we bring shortcuts to, to one's life. Wrong influence, we, we bring what? Shortcuts to one life. If you, are, if you are rightfully influenced, if you are rightfully influenced by the word of God, by the spirit of the word of God, your character, your speech, your behavior, we automatically draw people. It will bring people, people from no, people of all class. I'm talking about people of all class. We just come to you to ask, who are you? Then how can one worship God? How can one be a friend of God? How can one be a child of God? How can one be a child of God? So Jesus has been teaching us this and saying to us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to speak the word that is in your heart. Do not be afraid to act. We, you, see, you see, the world itself, this universe that we are living, the environment that we are living, it's enough to make one to have to have issue with faith. Because there are so many things that is happening in this world that if one is not holding on to the world, one can easily be influenced by, by it. Many have abandoned their faith because they see that it is no longer, it is not, it's not what they've been taught or what they've read. But but they come to that they come to that conclusion because they lack patience, because they lack perseverance. They, do you not know James one? He says that, like, like, that endurance endurance must finish what his course. Endurance must finish his course. So the, the 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 unstable that is in your life it is caused because there is no stability of the world in your heart. If the world is not stable, then you are dangling. You are dangling. You're like, a, you, 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 you'll be tinkering, you just dangling because there is no stability in your life. There is no stability in your Christian life. There is no stability in your Christian life. Why? Because the world has no, the world has no bedrock. The world has no foundation. The world has not been rooted. You've not been rooted in the world. You've not been rooted in the world. So the world comes to take its rightful place, which is what, which is where? in our heart, in our heart. So if our heart has not received this word, or if our hearts have received this word, and we've not put what we've received into practice, if you plant a seed and you do not water that seed, how then can that seed grow? Will the seed grow well or will the seed grow weary? If the seed is not watered. So also, if the world is being given to us in our heart, it is also our responsibility to what? To meditate on the word, to meditate on the word. When you meditate on the word of God, you are watering the word that is in your heart, meaning you are feeding your innermost being with the spirit. Now you are growing from a natural man to a supernatural, growing to a supernatural. The supernatural is the spirit of the father that is in you now. Growing from your innermost, grounding from your innermost, causing grounding in you, causing every grounding in you. Growing out from natural to supernatural. That's why your life becomes active. That's why your, 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 your life becomes alive. Your body becomes alive. Your body becomes active. Your, your mind becomes active. Your body becomes alive because you are responding to the world that is in you. That's why you don't confess weaknesses, you don't confess challenges, you don't confess failure, you begin to confess what the word says. What does the word say in your weakness? What does the word say in your poverty? What does the word say in your sickness? What does the word say in your challenges? He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. So are you confessing what the word says? Or are you merely, are you merely being controlled or being dictated upon by the main challenges that you are going through? We are suffering from challenges. I'm suffering. I'm suffering. So you are confessing that that suffering. Remember Matthew 12. Everyone will be judged according to the word. So what is the word that you are speaking? You are complaining that you are suffering. You are complaining that you are you are facing lack. So that has been your judgment because you make that call. You made that call from what you spoke. You didn't speak the believing word. You didn't speak the word that is alive. You didn't speak the word that is active. You didn't speak the word that you received. 
Where is the evidence of the word that you've received in your heart? Where is the evidence of the word that is alive, active, and full of power? Where is the word that break every yoke of poverty, every yoke of limitation, every yoke of sickness from your life? But you do not exercise that. Why? Because you allow your mind to be controlled, to be controlled by the challenges that you see with your eyes. He says, walk habitually by the Spirit. Walk habitually by the Spirit. So be conscious of your walking. Be conscious of how you walk. Be conscious of how you speak. Be conscious of how you act. Be conscious of how you eat. Be conscious of how you sleep. Be conscious of the environment that you find yourself. Be conscious of the environment that you find yourself that you not be, be led into temptation. The environment has, has, that, has that, that chance of, of, of taking one away from the fate of the world. But one who works in the spirit, who, is, who, who habits has been walked by the spirit, because walk by the spirit, at all times, you are in meditation of the word. So you walk in those environments. Those environments immediately, the challenges became not, they, be, they immediately becomes nullified. Immediately becomes nullified because greater is one in you than the one that is in the world. Greater is the one in you. Great is the one in you than the one that is in the world. So the one that is in the world has also abilities to draw people to its, its unrighteousness. Remember John 8, verse 44. The world has its father. The world has its father, and the enemy is the father of the world. So now, this world, this world also has abilities to draw people to its unrighteousness. When people begin to lie, when people begin to live in immorality lives, when people begin to live in an addicted life, there's this. There's, there, there are abilities of the world, of the world that is at will. But a, 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 a mind, a person that walk habitually by the spirit, overcome, overcome. First John four, first John five. You that overcome you because the spirit of the Father lives in you. You already overcome. You already overcome. John seventeen said, "Cheer up." There will be trials, there will be tribulation, there will be challenges, there will be all kinds of things. But cheer up, why? I have overcome for you. So let's quickly go back to Galatians 5. Let's quickly uh, I'll finish where we are reading from. Galatians 5, uh, from verse 22. Say, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which is present within, accomplishes is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and even and evil temper for bear, for bearers, for bearers. Kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint, content, contentness, the contentness, continence, continence, pardon me, continence. The, against such things, there is no law that can bring a charge. Against all of this, against all of this, there is no law that can bring a charge. There is no law that can bring it. So now, where does the law come in? Now remember, Moses, the law, when he came with the word, when he came with the word, when God took the Israel through the wilderness and, and, and the appearance of Jesus came to them, the rock, the rock. But they, they, what did they do when the rock, Jesus came, when Jesus came, when the Christ came, what did they do? Did they accept him? They do not accept him. When Moses brought forth Jesus, they do not accept him. They do not even know. They do not know. They did not accept him. They did not accept him at all. But now, what did now Moses give them that they, that they accept? The written law, the written law, thou shall not, the written law, that was the one they, they, they accept. That was the one they said. That's why they said, this is what we receive from Moses. In John, in, in, in John 8, when the issue with the woman, uh, 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 the, the, the woman who was caught in the heart in the, in, the, in the heart of adultery, in the heart of adultery, remember, they said when they brought, when they brought the, the prostitute, when they brought the, uh, the, the woman that committed the sin of adultery, when they brought her before the master, before our master Jesus Christ, they said, this is what our law, meaning they received the law quite all right. <laughs> they claim to the law all right, but the one 
that the, the, what, what God wanted them to have, what God want, want them to have at their possession, they failed to receive it. They failed to receive it. They failed to receive it. Who was the, who, who gave them that water? Who, who, who presented the rock, the rock where the water was coming from? They refused to accept the word. They refused to accept the word. But the same mouth that was praising God, the same mouth that was singing praises to God, the same mouth that was calling God, you are great God, you are the king, you swallowed the, 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 the army of Pharaoh, you swallow the army of Pharaoh, you are king. The same mouth, the same mouth that speak highly, it was the same mouth, it was the same mouth that failed, that failed to see the plan of God for their life that was given to them with their own eyes. In, in, in the same reign this day, in the same reign this day, many reject, many reject what God is giving to them. Many reject what God has planned for them. Many reject the plan of God for the, from, from, from their life because they say it's too difficult, because it's too hard. You reject the plan of God from your life to, to say it is too difficult, to say it is too hard. You reject the plan of God for your life to say, no, I'm a child of God. This, this difficult journey, this difficult road is not the plan of God. You reject the plan of God from your life because you lack understanding. So where is the fruit of the spirit in you? Where is the fruit of spirit in you? Because you lack, you lack, you lack the fruit of the spirit. That's why you reject the things of the Father. They lack the fruit of the spirit. That's why they reject when the, the spirit of the Father came. came. They reject him. They rejected him. They rejected him. They rejected him. But they took the one that Moses gave, which was what? The written law. The written law. And that law now began to condemn them. It was that law, that law that, that condemned many of them. That law condemned them until when Jesus came in flesh right now. Jesus came in flesh now, in flesh now, to come and end the law, to bring law into subjection. So it is important for you to understand this blessing. It says there, I'll repeat again, Galatians 5, verse 24. I'm going to repeat again, Galatians chapter 5, from verse 24, from verse 23. Gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint, uh, continence. Against such things, there is no law that can bring a child. And those who belong to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature. Remember, there, there was no God in them because they, they, reject, they reject the plan of God. They reject the prince of God. So there is no there is no God within them. So their flesh was due to condemn because they received the law, the law that carried death, the law that carry all kinds of things. They received that law. They received that law. They welcome that law. So they abide by the law. So now those who are in Christ, we are not subject to law, but we are subject to the spirit. So that how do we see the spirit of God in us? How do we see the spirit of God in us? It says the word of the Lord in Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. I can also quickly read it. Let me also quickly read it. Hebrews 4. I'm using Amplified Version. I'm also using the digital, digital Bible. That's the thing. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4, from verse, from verse 12. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breadth of life, which is a soul. And the author the life, the soul, the immortal spirit. Now it says now, and and of joint and and of joint and marrow of the deepest part of our nature, meaning our nature cannot escape when the world comes. But we have choices. Listen to this. We have choice. But you see, our nature cannot escape when it comes. But again, we have choices. So know the choice that you made. Make, know the choice that you make with yourself. 
Know and understand the choices that you take. Know and understand that you, you make choices that can either that can either uh, cause you to be in his presence or that can either cause you not to be in his presence. So know the choices that you are making for your life. Make the right choice for your life. Make the choices, make the choice that that, that has been approved by the Father so that you will not be a victim of your own doing. Make the choices that has been approved by the Father so that you will not be a, you not be a victim of your own what, of your own doing. Many become victim of their own doing. Why? Because of the choices they make. That's why do not do not be influenced many by the choices of you of, of what you make. So be careful of the choices that you make. Be careful of the choices. Be careful of your choices. Say, no, listen. I repeat again. I repeat again. Verse 12, Hebrews 4, verse 12. Say, for the word that God speak, for the word that God speak, for the word that God speak, for the word that God speak is alive and full of power, making it active. Operative, energizing, and effective. So making it operative, energizing, and what and effective. So the word that God speak. Now, if uh, um Psalms eight, Psalms eight. What was man made of? What was the thought of man? Though made a little lower than angel, yet giving authority over the work of the hand. So where is that authority? The word, the word, the word. The word is authority. The word is power. The word. So now man received this word. So now how did we receive this word? John 3 verse 16. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So the life that carries the life of authority, the life that carries the life of power, the life that is full of authority, power, effective, energizing, and active, all at the same time, simultaneously working all together at the same time. The, 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 the life that carries such word comes from the sun, comes from the sun. So if you receive the sun, if you are adopted into sonship, you carry such word, you carry such power, you carry such authority. So every word that you speak is as if the word that God speak, meaning you speak every word is it, God effective. Understand when, when 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 Jeremiah when Jeremiah says, when God said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you have seen well. In Jeremiah chapter one verse 10, 11, Jeremiah, you have seen well. And I will watch to see that I perform my word, that I perform my word, that I perform my word. It is not God that will speak this time. It is God, all people. Who were adopted to become sons of God through the Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So you've been adopted into sonship. Now, when you speak, God watches to see that he performs his word. So performance of the word comes instantly because you are speaking in accordance to his will. So you are representing God here on earth. Let that will be done. It is through you. Through your character, through your act, through your word, through your speech, through your living, through your behavior. It is through all of that that many will begin to see the will of God. So you allow yourself to be wrongfully influenced. How did you get to the point of allowing yourself to be wrongfully influenced? When you allow yourself to be wrongfully influenced, so how did you get to that point? How did you get to that point where you are wrongfully influenced by what character? What has influenced you? What has what has entered your mind to let you to, to let you to uh, to let you to let you come to the state of saying you, 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 you God has forsaken you? Who told you God forsake you? Who told you that God has forsaken you? Who have, who have lied to you? Who have lied to you? It's, listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. We go back. Let's go back to where we began from 2 Corinthians 4. Listen to this. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. We, we are reading. We're reading from verse 13, right? Okay. Okay, let me start from verse 12. Does 2 Corinthians 4 verse 12. 
Thus, death is active at work in us, but it is in order that our life may be active at work in you. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We too believe and therefore we speak. I have believed and I spoke. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting. Now, verse 14 says, Assure that he who raised up the Lord Jesus. Assured means guarantee. 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 He said, Assure that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up also with Jesus and bring us along with you into his presence. For all these things are taking place. Now, you do not know that what you go through, they are taking place for someone's sake. You do not, you do not understand that your challenges have to happen for someone else's sake. But because you, you miscalculated, you misjudged, you, be, you, begin to, you begin to draw yourself into condemnation. You fail the first principle that there is now no condemnation, no adjudge of guilt to those who are in Christ Jesus. So you cannot be in the Father yet feel condemned. You meaning you have questionable faith, meaning you, you, are, you are doubting the word, meaning you doubt what you've graciously received, meaning you doubt the grace that rescued you, meaning you doubt the grace that have restored you, meaning you, you doubt the grace that have revived you, meaning you doubt the, the grace that have lift, lifted you up all night. You doubted it. Why did you doubt the, the, the faith of the world. Why did you doubt the world in you? Why did you doubt the father? Are you behaving like how the forefathers behave? Stiff nakedness, stiff nakedness. They, are, they, they were so stiff nakedness that they became rebellious towards even to God. That, that, that they could not see when the sun came for them. When the sun came, to come and honor, to come and honor God in them, they, they they could not, they could not discern that, they could not discern that because what they already have a rebellious mind towards the, the things of the Father. Now, verse fifteen says, "For these things are taking place for your sake, so that the more grace, which is divine favor and spiritual blessing, extends to more and more people and multiplies through the many more thanksgiving." may increase and redound to the glory of God. Now, verse 16, check, listen to this. Listen to this, check this. Therefore, we do not become discouraged. Therefore, we do not become discouraged. Many have become discouraged. Many have become discouraged. You are tired of fellowshipping. You are tired of praying. You are tired of fasting. You are tired of praising. You are tired of praising. You are tired of worshiping. Because it seems like the evil, the evil doers are, 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 are walking free. They are walking majestically. Where the sons of glory are the ones that are supposed to walk majestically. It's, it seems like as if the evil doers are the ones walking majestically. You are in a place of work. You are in a place of a career path. You find yourself lacking. Why are you fellowshipping? Why you give thanks to God? Why you are a son of God? But the wickedness, the evil doers, the evil deeds one are the one like 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 they are the one prevailing. It is not so. It is not so. Do not confuse temporary sources to permanent sources. We have a temporary source and we have a permanent source. Temporary sources. To one, it doesn't mean it's permanent. No, it's temporary, and temporary does not last. Temporary does not last. But what is permanent? It is everlasting. It is everlasting. Now listen to this. Therefore, we do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, exhausted, worried out through fear. Though our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day after day. Now listen again. For our, verse 17, for our light momentary affliction, this slight distress of of this slight distress of the passing hour is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving. This is the preparing producing and achieving. So where will it prepare for? Where will it produce for? Where will it achieve for? God says, God says in Isaiah 28, I, 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 I will confront this summary, this rebellious generation 
with their own stammering, the same thing that they think they know, the same thing that they thought that they knew. Listen to this. This is good. This is beautiful. For our light momentary affliction, this light distress of passing hour is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparison and all calculation, a vast and a transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Now, 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 listen to this. Blessed is never to never to cease. Okay, now, now, um, let, let, let me quickly take you to let me quickly take you to Isaiah twenty nine. Isaiah twenty nine. This is it. Now listen to this. Isaiah twenty nine. On your own, if you can, on your own, read, read everything on your own. On your own, read everything. Read everything on your own. Now I'm just going to take from verse 10. For the Lord has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep, and he has closed your eyes, the prophet. Your heads, your heads, you see us, he has covered and muffled. The vision of all this has become has become for you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men gave it to one, who can read, saying, read this, I pray you. He says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when the book is given to him, who is not learned, meaning who is not learned, who is not learned, uh, saying, read this, I pray you. He says, I cannot read. Now verse 13 says, and the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but remove their heart and minds far from me, and their fear and reverence for me are a commandment of men that is learned by reputation without any thought as to any meaning. Therefore, behold, I will again do marvelous things with these people, marvelous and astonished things, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the understanding of their descending men will vanish or be hidden. They woo to those who seek to hide deep from the Lord their counsel, whose deeds are in dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? Or, you, or oh, your, oh, verse 16, oh, your perversity. You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be considered of no more account? Than the clay shall the things that is made say of his maker, he did not make me, or the things that is formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding. Listen to this message. Listen to this. Message. I'm speaking to the heart of those, those who, 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 who've considered themselves that they will not make it in life, even though they are born again, they are born to suffer because they see the unbelievers progressing. They see the unbelievers making a success from the, from the same from the same career path. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Do not confuse temporary position. Do not confuse temporary blessing with permanent blessing. Temporary means it will not last. Permanent is everlasting. What God gives is permanent. So temporary is not what God gives. Temporary is man-made. It can come in any form. It can come in any kind. It is man-made. It will not stand the test of time. When it's time for the true test, when it's time for the one that gave permanent, when it's time for it to come, when it's time for it to happen, when it's time to, for it to make it happen, it immediately flows. It flows. It, it, it just come. It just happens. So don't be worried in your heart. Don't have a thin heart right now. Confessing weaknesses. No, you're not meant to confess weakness. Say, I am strong. Say, I am strong. That's why the word that you've received is a word that is alive, is a word that is active, is a word that is full of power, is a word that energizing, is a word that is producing, is a word that is achieving, is a word that is as effectiveness. So, the more you meditate on such word, the more you meditate on the word of God, the more you are calling the things of God in your life to, to come to reality. The more you call 
It, the things of the Father for your life, to reality. The Father says, I have thought and plans for your life to prosper you and not to harm you. So the thought of the Father for your life is to prosper you. So as you are meditating on the word of the Father, prosperity of the Father, meaning the plan of the Father begins to be manifesting upon you. Now, verse 17, Isaiah 29. It is not, it, it, it is not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into fruitful field, and the fruitful field esteemed as a forest. And in, in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and out of obscurity and gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice and, and exult in the, in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one, the Assyrian enemy, shall come to naught, and the, and the scoffer shall cease, and all those who watch for iniquity as, as an occasion for accusation shall be cut off. You see, a time is coming, and that time is now, when all those who want to, to strive with accusation, they will literally be cut off. They will literally be cut off. Remember, I say, I will curse those who curse you. I will bring pain upon those who cause you pain. I will afflict those who, 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 who cause to afflict you. Listen, the Lord is on your side. The Lord is for you. The King of glory never forsake his, his own. He, because he never sleeps, he never slumber. So he will never forsake you. Even at your time of need, he is right there. So all you have to do as the son of God, as an adopted son of God, as a believer of Christ, keep meditating and keep giving in terms. Philippians 4, what does this say in Apostle Paul? He said, give thanks to God. Whether situation are favorable or not, give thanks to God because God is watching to see if you will trust in him, if you will remain in him, if you will abide in him. Don't shift away from the principle of God because God is not a man that shifts. Now, listen to this. Verse 21. Those who make a man an offender and bring condemnation upon him with a word and lay a trap for him, who oppose justice at the city gate and toss aside the innocent and truly righteousness with an empty plea. Therefore, thus says the Lord, who redeem Abraham out of your and idolatry concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not be ashamed. Not then shall his face become pale with fear and disappointment because of his children, the, uh, the, the generation. For when he, see, well, when he sees his children walking into the way of pity and virtue, the work of my hands in his midst, they will, they will reverend my name. They will reverend the only one of Jacob and reverently fear the God of Israel. Those who err in spirit will come to understanding. Those who murmur discontently will accept instruction. So a time is coming, and that time is now. When those who strive in accusation will literally be cut off. So don't, don't merely allow yourself to be misguided. Okay? Don't allow yourself to be begrudged. The Holy Spirit, many are begrudging the Holy Spirit because he has not done what he promises to do. But God, as we all know, is a promise, promise keeper. He's the way maker. He keeps his promises. He, he, he keeps his word. His word comes to fulfillment in our life. His word comes to fulfillment in our body. His word comes to fulfillment in our way. His word comes to fulfillment in all our doing. Our mind should remain focused on him. Our mind should remain focused about him. Our mind should remain focused on the word of God. Our mind should remain focused. Nothing should interfere in our fellowship. Nothing should interfere in our relationship with God. Nothing should interfere in our prayer life. Nothing should interfere. Nothing should, in, nothing should hinder our belief. Our belief should continue to grow. Our belief should grow. So faith comments by hearing and obeying. What do you hear? What do you obey? The basis of the word. So you make believe what you've received. Remember, we, we started with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. He said, because you believe, we speak this word. And because you believe, we speak this now to become the fruit of the spirit. It becomes the fruit of the spirit. It becomes the fruit of the spirit. So we are not eating what comes from the shop. We are not eating what is brought from the, from the supermarket. It becomes what is of only. It becomes what is of only. 
it becomes holy. It becomes pure because the word that has been spoken that in fact is, is, a, is a word that is of purity. It's coming out of the out of the purity. So it becomes now, it, the word infected now, when the word of God infects this now, it, it becomes what? It becomes what has been declared it to be. It becomes now the flesh. Remember, the word became flesh and dwell. The word became flesh. Now this now becomes the flesh of the Father because now the word is the Father. Where there is no lacking. Where there is no lacking. Let's finish with, uh, 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 let's finish with Romans 10. Let's finish it to Romans 10. The Holy Spirit does not, the Holy Spirit does not retire because of time. The Holy Spirit does not retire. Let's finish with Romans 10. Now. Uh, Romans chapter 10. I'm just going to start from this one. Brethren, with all joy, ask desire and goodwill for Israel. I long and pray to God that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they, that they have a certain zeal and enthusiasm for God, but it is not enlightened and according to correct and vital knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness that God ascribes, ascribes which, makes, which makes one acceptable to him in word, Thought and did. Now, underline those three. Underline those three. Uh, those three uh, uh, sentences that I just mentioned. Now, in word, thoughts, and deed. Now, the word that we receive, we as believer, we as children of God, we as sons of idol, we have to thought of it daily. Joshua chapter one verse eight. Joshua, my servant, do not let this word of mine to depart from you. Meditate upon this word day and night. So the words that we receive. As we daily receive from our Father, Papa, we are to thought of it. Each word, we are to make it our thought. We are to make it our thought. Now, when we make the word, when we thought of it, when we thought of that word daily, now, the, the deeds of that word accompanies, the deeds of that word, meaning action of the word, faith, action, faith, action. Get, listen, listen, do you know, it says, I mean, I mean, I mean, Jesus said to us, when I said to us, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. We are his disciples. We are his brother. We are his children. We are his followers. Jesus was speaking to his disciples and said, if, you have, if your faith is as tiny as a mustard seed, as a mustard seed, if you command, if you say to this mountain, be moved, this mountain will hear, this mountain will move. It's mountain more. So the word that we receive carries such capacity. The word that we receive carries such, such capacity. So when we are thinking of it, thinking means by meditating on it, you make the word your life. You make the word your breath. You make the word your all and all. Meaning you refuse to entertain any foreign thing, any foreign thing, any foreign thing. A foreign thing means things that is not pleasant to God. Foreign things mean things that does not stand in right any way. Meaning you don't stand with, yourself, with the challenges, with, with what is happening in the world today. The world may be falling apart. The world may be, may be going through all kinds of things. You, you, refuse, you, refuse to, you refuse to go by that standard. Hmm? God love you. God is with you. Blessing. I just want to quickly finish that because of time. The Spirit does not retire. We'll continue again tomorrow. We'll continue again tomorrow. We'll continue again tomorrow. Is it for being ignorant of the righteous of God as crap, which make one to myself acceptable in the world, thought, deed, thought, and deed, and seeking to establish a righteousness, a mean of salvation of their own. They did not obey or submit themselves to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of law, the limit at which he sees to be fair, for the law leads up to him who is the fulfillment of his types, and in him the purpose which is the, it was designed to accomplish is fulfilled. That is the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law is fulfilled in him as the means of righteousness, right relationship to God for everyone who trusts in him and adheres to and relies on him. You see, now Moses, for Moses writes that the man who can practice the righteousness perfect conformity to God's way. If you, if you practice, if you practice this this way, if you practice this pattern, if you if you practice this now, you conform to you conform to this, you conform to this now. Romans 12. He said, do not 
do not merely uh, uh, conform to the things of this world, don't conform to this world, but be a renewer of the world. Romans 12, be a renewer of the world. Now, 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 this is because of time, the Holy Spirit does not retire. We're going to stop here right now. We're going to stop here. I declare this the fruit of the vine. I declare what you have in your home to become the fruit of the vine. Partake and eat from it. If you have not known the Lord, it's important for you to give your life to God, for you to give your life to God and, 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 and receive salvation. So if you want to know the Lord, if you want to have a relationship with the Father, stay after us as we say this prayer. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I've heard your word. I welcome you. Your word is spirit, life-giving spirit. Lord Jesus, I humble myself before you. I'm a sinner in need of your salvation, in need of your mercy, in need of your goodness. You laid down your life for me on the cross of Calvary, and you rose again on the third day to give me life, the abundant life. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord, you are my Savior. I'm born again now. The old is gone. The new has come. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm no longer condemned. Thank you for giving me this life. Thank you for writing down my name in the book of life where there is no condemnation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are born again. You are born in you. God, love you. God is with you. I declare what you have in your home right now, blessed saints, brothers and sisters, to become the fruit of divine. Eat and partake for the glory of God. This has become the fruit of divine. As you eat, you are eating for the glory of God. Nothing in that, nothing, nothing steal from you, nothing stand in your way, nothing in that in your life right now. As I declare this week, the glory of 